So here she is. Another treasure off of Marketplace. I've got another one of these tractors. I did uh, a two-part series on it. If you'll remember, it's been a while since I uploaded anything on my YouTube account. Um, but I'm hoping to make a comeback with this one. So I found this on Marketplace, like I said. And it was for the right price of $500. It started off, they wanted a little too much money for it. Um, and the other one that I did the videos on, uh, I've been using it now pretty much nonstop for about a good year and a half. Haven't had any issues with it at all. Um, I did pop a coil on it, but other than that, no issues. So, I'm going to try and make this long story really short. Um, so, I bought this tractor. It, the rear rim was shot. Um, that's about all that's wrong with it. Um, basically, I, I wanted parts. Now, I could make a video on getting the parts out of this thing, one of which I'll show you, mainly the main reason I bought the thing. I could chop this thing up, use it for parts for the other one. That would make a really boring video. I could get this thing running, uh, which I totally plan to do, which makes for a fun video. But that's been kind of done before. But I've got big plans for this. It has come to me in a dream. I've daydreamed about it for a long time. But I have got some really big plans for this tractor. I'm going to do something that I can't find anywhere else on YouTube. I've seen it done a couple different ways. I've seen a design kind of similar to what I'm thinking about, but I can't say that I've ever seen one of these old Ford 8Ns swim. But what I'm going to show you, so, I'll try and get the shot right here. So, basically at an angle like this was uh, the picture they had in the ad. There was one from the other side and one from it from the back. Now, if you'll notice right there, looks kind of like a, of course you can see it pretty clear in this camera, but it looks kind of like just a grease blotch. You wouldn't think much of it. But actually, because this camera shows it so well, hiding inside of this thing is a Sherman transmission and not just a regular Sherman. Uh, I believe it's a combo. So the combo transmission gave you both a high, low, and standard range speeds for your transmission. So. The issue with building an amphibious tractor is that I have no idea what size prop to put on it. This happens to be the one that I have. The pitch on it is pretty decent. It's got four big blades on it. I'd say from... It's definitely wider from fin to fin. I would say it's more than a foot. Probably like 14 inches, something like that. Um, is it the right propeller for this? Probably not. It's probably not even close. But, would that step up and step down? I'm going to be able to change the speed of it. So if the pitch is too much and the engine, which is only a, a whopping 23 to 25 horsepower, um, if that engine doesn't like that prop at the high speed, I can break the ratio uh, and get it down. Now, this thing in the back didn't come with it. For the most part, I haven't touched or changed the tractor at all. It's basically just the way I got it, minus the tire. Um, this is an old PTO uh, post hole digger frame. And I think it's going to be perfect. What I'm going to do, of course it's buried in the ground or under the leaves right now. I think down here somewhere is where my thrust bearing is going to be. My prop's going to be here. I'll have to build off of this some. And that's where my rudder will go. Now this is the perfect tractor, I think. There is no, I'm, I take all that back. There is no perfect tractor to make amphibious. Tractors weren't made to go in the water, but we're going to figure it out. So... The steering box on these older tractors, you've got one arm on one side, one on the other. As you turn, each arm goes forwards and back. And I think somewhere in here, I'm going to mount a bracket. I've got some cables, like some really heavy duty parking brake cables. If I get the angle right, I can run the cables back and that's what will work the rudder. So I've got the PTO to use for the prop. Uh, the height of the rudder or the prop and all that really doesn't matter because it's all hooked to the three-point, which I can raise and lower. Um, this is going to be a fun one. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to pull this off. It's February now. Sorry, mid-February. We may not be in the water. We may not ever get in the water, but I'm going to try my best to do something different. And this dream is just a little too big to say, well, I think I'm just going to turn this into parts for the other tractor. 
that's kind of boring. I've seen other videos of tractors floating and doing stuff, but I don't think it's going to be quite like I do this one. So, we're going to start off easy. We've got to figure out if that, uh, if that motor is worth anything, and the easiest way to do that is get her on up to the shop. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't even turned it over. I just took the guy's word that it wasn't locked up, so we're going to see that she's not locked up. Oh, I've, I've also got basically anything you see missing, like that vent, the carburetor, uh, the top of that. I've got all that in the, the garage, so stay tuned. Hopefully this isn't or doesn't turn into a series that's big, long, drawn out, and ends in a tractor sinking in the river. Um, so we're just going to start off like most tractor videos, and we're going to see what the condition of that motor is. <laughs> So, starting with the basics, I think first move is going to be to get that hood off. And with anything that's been sitting for a while, I like to go ahead and just put some oil down each of the uh, spark plug or in each of the cylinders. Um, just in case anything's sticking. I don't actually know when the last time this thing was run. The guy said that they had bought the thing five years ago. Um, so we're going to treat it like maybe it hasn't run in ten years. I don't know. He picked it up as a project. So who knows how long it sat before that. Uh, also, just like with the last one, all this, no, no, no. All this right here, this is junk. This is junk wire. Uh, not a fan of those ignition switches. Definitely not a fan of the solenoids. You're much better off just to run a direct positive line from here up to a push button straight to the battery as far as working that starter. This is problematic. If this thing is going to be going in the water, we are going to want as little electronical stuff as possible so that if it gets some sea spray, she won't short out. Okay, it's approximately two seconds later, and I've already found something. So, because it's an old tractor, I knew there would be issues. Issue number one, PTO lever not moving. Why is that? Do not know. But, the other issue that I've run into, um, as you can see, I, I just threw a random rock in there to hold it up while it was coming back from the woods, but it dawned on me during the tractor ride, there's a little test you can do for these hydraulics with your lever all the way up and disengage which I believe is the position the lever is frozen in um, because if it wasn't if it was engaged this PTO would be pretty hard to turn but I'm turning this of course it's an overrunning clutch but it doesn't really matter I'm turning this and on these tractors if you do that your PTO is connected to your hydraulic pump in fact anytime you want to use these arms your PTO has to be on so with the arm all the way up and spinning this, I'm working the pump, but I'm not getting any raise action on these arms. So that is a problem issue of some kind. Um, before you say, check the fluid, I already did that. And not only does it have fluid in it, it's got good looking fluid in it. So that may be an issue. Um, no other issues have really shown up yet. Like I said, I turned the camera off and just did that and realized that. So, so far no issues, but again, let's get the hood off. Okay, hood is off. Um, nothing too surprising yet. Um, everything looks pretty clean. Uh, water pumps maybe got a little bit of play. Alright, so I've got all these spark plugs loosened up so you can see these for the first time just as I see them um, usually when you're getting into a motor like this an older one that's been sitting a while when you take that spark plug out um, 
usually if it's gotten water or humidity or condensation or something and you're dealing with a locked up engine or you know maybe it had a busted head gasket and flooded or whatever the case may be the condition of that spark plug on the underside will usually be a pretty good indicator of what's going on in the cylinder not always but so that one's not too bad it's got a little tiny bit of rust on it but it's not it's not too bad. What is scary is that I can tell that's a spark plug that wasn't used. See how clean and white that ceramic is inside there? It's not really got that carbon on it. This thing never ran with that. Actually, I don't know why I'm putting that back in. We've still got to oil this thing yet. Um, that's kind of an indicator it never ran on these plugs. Maybe it got caught mid-restoration and just never got used. Uh, that's just the little the little washer there is not quite there we go see again that's not it doesn't have that carbon on it these plugs were never used so in good news um, we don't need to buy plugs so we just need to wire wheel these a little bit and clean them up um, alright clean looking plug last one not not I mean, obviously not used. So, I wonder if I can... Well, of course, being a, a flathead, you're not going to see the piston or anything, but... Um, nothing nothing too concerning yet. Um, let's get a little oil down there. And it's going to be a trick, but maybe I can get this thing to roll over by hand, and we'll see if she's free. Alright, so we're ready to put some oil in this motor. Um, that's just going to help with the rings that have been sitting for a while. Now what I like to use, I've got this little medical syringe with a bent plastic tip. Um, for one of these motors this works perfect. It doesn't have to be any certain oil. You can use motor oil, you can use I wouldn't put gear oil or anything like that. I also wouldn't put trans oil. I just, just put some kind of regular motor oil in there. Just something to kind of help these cylinders um, so you don't scar them up or whatever um, because they've been sitting dry for a while. So you don't have to do anything crazy or a whole lot. Um, like say, I just I do it sort of incrementally. Like this is a fourth. Give this one a little shot. Give it pretty good pressure as I do it, just to kind of help that oil get to the piston. And uh, that way, when we go to roll her over, that oil can kind of just work work up and down on the rings. And that way, hopefully, we preserve this as best as we can. Okay, so here's where we're at. I did a little digging around. Um, on the front part of that crankshaft, you can't hardly see it. There's a little vertical slot. Um, sort of looks like a uh, like the top of a flathead screw. Um, these things originally, you can just barely see it. These things originally, back in the old day, you would have had a hand crank as an option if your electric starter went out. Um, on some of the 1942 models of this tractor, the 2N, um, during the war that was uh, one way they were only offered. You only had the hand crank. They had a magneto system, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, it does not have the adapter for your standard hand crank, which was sort of a twisted piece that if the tractor started it would kick out. Anyway, enough about that. Um, it doesn't have that. So, I tried to use this punch, but I can already tell when I put that in there because of the angle of it, it doesn't want to hold. I can't even turn it by hand. Um, it just wants to pop right out. So, I did a little digging around and in my scrap pile I had this, uh, it's a shaft off of something, I forget what nail, but anyway I just took my grinder and I kept working on it until it came to a little point. I may have gone just a touch too far, but it's fairly hard steel, so hopefully it'll be fine. So what my plan is, uh, I'm going to run this, it's going to be a trick with one hand, run this in there, which comes through the axle, and hook it into that slot like so. And then take my handy dandy pry bar here, if I can get her to go on there, there we go, with that and a 7 8 socket, 
I'm going to get the camera set up and you're going to see right as I see it uh, whether this motor is locked up or not. Uh, if it is, it's going to be quite the setback. If not, we can continue on with the most crazy tractor design video you've ever seen. All right, let's see what happens here. Oh, something, something turned. Not a good sign. Oh, there she goes. All right. Thank God, I thought for a second it wasn't gonna go. It uh, I think my adapter. She gave her a nice little, uh, nice little twist, but uh, let me uh, let me get a socket so I can actually crank it around. Put that in like so. Yeah, I think she was uh, she was stuck a little bit, but not not too bad. Let's see if we can get her to move a little more. Yep. There we go. All right, so the motor's not locked up. Uh, she is making a rather bizarre noise in the back. Let me uh, let me get you guys repositioned so that way you can hear what I'm hearing. Kind of a weird noise. Um, not sure what that's about. Um, sounds kind of like the starter or somewhere in that area. Um, but that's not too big of a concern right now. Um, well, actually, it is. My ne my next step here. Uh, now that we know the motor's free, it is time to address all of this fancy schmancy wiring that we have here. Um, so now I will convert this. We'll do away with the solenoid here. We'll try and salvage whatever cables we can, but all that wiring and stuff, that's, that's junk. We don't need that at all. Um, so at that point, once I get that set up, we'll know what the status of the starter is. Um, and we will go from there.